Welcome back to Danger Wears Animation Department. This is Rojo B, the new version, part two, creating actions, arms and mouth. And we are creating Rojo B and his friends to create cartoons and comics to help teach the young and vulnerable about the early stages of abuse and how to prevent it and call it out. So if you'd like to help us, visit DangerAware.org. You can help us by making suggestions. If you're an animator, you can create us a cartoon and we'll post it on our site. So let's get into it. Here is Rojo B. Now we can move on to the next bone. So we go to the bone layer and we click on the bone and we create an action. And we move the control bone all the way down to the minimal position. Jump to 64. Move it to the maximum position. And in this case, what we're doing is stretching the torso. So we're going to click this bone here and let's just scale it by 1.3 just like we did with the hands. And on the low level, we'll go to 0.7. So the same amount of difference in the other direction. So now our character can stretch and shrink the torso quite a bit, but not ridiculously amount. Then we go to 32. And of course we reset the bone so that we're releasing it for any other activity. Then we go to the next bone. And that is going to be the drop top arms. So we drop the top arms. We rotate the bone downward. We jump to 64 and rotate the bone upward. And at this point, we're going to grab the bones. So we use B for bone. Click the left top arm, hold shift, click the top right arm, or vice versa, click the right arm first, then the left arm. And now we grab and shift and drag them upward. We don't want to leave the shoulders though, so we'll stop right there. Then we're going to go back to the one position and we just drag them down about the same amount. We don't want to go too far. And this is just so we can move the arms up and down on the torso. And when we go to 32 and hit reset, reset, and reset. So now we're back to the main line. And am I seeing the legs twisting, changing, and must have missed something resetting at 32. So let's go to 32 and we're going to grab the bones here. So hit just B bone and just grab all these bones. Doesn't matter if we grab too many, we can, we're just releasing them. So we reset, reset, reset. And yes, I just saw that leg move. So now we go back to our main line and we choose no bone and then we can manipulate the bone and the arms drop down and they go up. And finally, we're gonna do the bone to twist the arms around the torso. So this is gonna be the torso twist. And this is the one where we're going to use the animated layer sort. So we're going to first move our control bone to one, then jump to 64 and move it all the way to the right. And at 64, we went these arms behind the torso. And so that's the top left arm and the low left arm. And we're going to, at this point, move them behind the thorax. I keep calling it a torso, but on a bug, it's called the thorax. So there, it's behind. And then at 48, 
we would want the arms to be moved over so let's go to the bone layer and we're going to grab the bones and just move them to where they're barely touching the edge of the body so taking in consideration that we move them up and down I'm going to leave it overlapping right there and then we do the same thing with the bottom one here we bring it on over whoops I didn't want to turn it so control Z and then we pick it up holding shift and move it right to the edge just like that then one step below that then we want those back up on top of the thorax and it did already so now we can check it so from here on and at this point we want the bones reset so we hit B for bone and shift and then reset their position and now they're in the right position but behind the thorax so and we move them leftward okay they're still supposed to be behind up to here so let's move the left to below thorax and left below thorax so now they go behind they come around in front and at 32 we want them to be reset again to their base location and then as it comes on around the back side these will come on around to the front so we're going to go with shift and move them together to right about there well let's go ahead and make it touch the center of the bone there all right on the top one and then we're going to do the opposite for the other side so first let's check that does it zoom around yes and it doesn't come too far around so maybe we should come a little bit deeper in at this point let's do that let's hold shift and bring these about now well, let's go with the point where the chin hits the shoulder there all right and then now it comes around it comes back to the front and at this point then we want B for bone and grab this one and this one and T and shift so we want to bring this to where it's right at the chin and shoulder right up here connecting then as it comes to 16 these bones come out to the edge to touch the edge of the body and I think the little bottom one needs to go a little bit further so we move in a little bit further on its own right there and then to one now they're in the right position but we need to move the right arm below the thorax right there and the right top arm below the thorax and they should stay that way until 16 which they do and then at 17 let's go ahead and just click these here and then at 17 we're gonna move them right back to where they were so um, right top arm goes below uh, left top arm and right low arm because below left low arm and so now we're back to normal and 64 we then want this bone B for bone and shift 
and T to grab. Um, Got to be on the bone layer. And T to grab. And now I can move these um, all the way to touching the center. I'm sorry, I got distracted because I'm noticing that this is on 65, not 64. So there we go. And at 32, we want everything reset. So I'm just going to grab all these bones and reset to release them. And there we go. So now, let's grab the animation control here and check the timeline. Looks like I did it. 63 here instead of 64. There. Okay. So. Now the arms rotate around the torso. Independently from the legs. But together as a group. Two to two. Because we can't separate them individually. And you really wouldn't on a torso like this. So. That, that works good. So as we go behind, then the hands, I believe, will be behind the head. Let's see here. Oops. Two torso twist. And what did I do wrong? Ah, I forgot to move this lever to 64, or I accidentally moved it to one instead of uh, completing it to 64. So let's test this now. There we go. So the arms now rotate around the torso as we desire. We can reach behind the character's head fairly quickly and easily with either set of arms or they can both be in front where we can do many great things with them. So we don't have to constantly go, oh wait, let's go and move things over here because we've set it up here where we've got things where we can control the character going up and down, the arms going up and down, and the legs going around the base of the torso, and the arms going around the upper part of the torso. And we've used two different methods to accomplish that. Fortunately, Moho provides a lot of different features for that. So we've got our abdomen working, we've got our thor thorax working, we have our wings working. So now we're going to move on to the face. The next step is to do the portions of the mouth. So we need to exit the animation layer, go back into the construction layer. We're going to choose this first bone here at the bottom, which is smile and frown. So this allows our character to smile or frown. So all the way to the left is going to be smile. All right, now let's make the left frown. So we rotate the left all the way down to frown, down to frown, and smile for up. So our uh, maximum number will be smile. So now what we need to do is go into the head as there are no bones on the mouth. The, the mouth is not being affected by any bones except where it's positioned in the head. So now we're going to go in and we're going to affect just part of the lips. So first we go in and use G to grab and we can grab one point here and then holding shift we grab this point here and since we're doing smile we can grab T and that makes them both grab together and now if we do an effect on one it does it on both and for smile we're just going to bring it up to what would the maximum smile on this character look like then we drop down to one and we holding shift we bring them down to make our maximum frown all right and now you can see we need to move these cheek uh, layer down and I'm going to just put the 
point right at the tip, but I'm also going to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it by holding shift so it rotates an exact 45. And then I'm going to bring that tip into contact with that center point on the cheek. Just like that. It's just slightly below it. So now we're going to do that to the other cheek. So we're going to bring it down. We're going to rotate it with the shift on. And that makes it 45. And then we bring it till it's just barely touching. And so our deep frown actually moves those off of the face of the character. But it's a cartoon. It's fine. So now when we go back up to maximum smile at 64, we need to bring these cheeks up. And again, we're going to rotate them back to normal and then 45 the other way. And then we're going to bring it to where it's just barely touching. And then we do the other cheek and bring it up. Well, we can rotate it first if we like. And then bring it up until it's just barely touching. And voila. We now have our smile and our frown. And we go to 32 and we simply reset everything. So reset the cheeks back to what they were. Like that. And we reset the lips. So grab all of the lips and hit reset. And so now we can go full smile and full frown. So now we're going to go to the next step. And that is to do the, the jaw up and down. So let's create the action. Rotate the bone all the way to the one. Jump to 64. Rotate it up. And so with jaw up and down, that affects the jaw and the teeth inside the mouth only. So we go first to the uh, skull. That's the back behind the jaw actually, but we're going to need to move it. So we're going to hit T, grab this point here, holding shift, we're going to move it up. Then we're going to go to the face and we're going to grab the bottom set of points. So there's seven points here. And when we hit T, that creates a box around it. We're going to just simply drag it up just like that. So that it shrinks the size of the box holding the jaw. And then we're going to go into the mouth. Uh, let's see up here. And to the bottom teeth. And we're going to hold shift and we're going to bring the bottom teeth up completely in contact behind the top teeth. And so now when we go back the other way, we're going to bring the teeth down from their normal position and we're going to grab the jaw on the face and just stretch it down and then we bring the skull down as well and as you can see that's changing the head here as we do that so now we've got the jaw opens and closes and the teeth move with the jaw movement so now we go to 32 and reset everything so reset, go to the face, reset, go to the teeth, and reset. So now we can go back to the bone layer and the main line. And now we can manipulate the character's jaw up and down. So we get some definite action occurring when the character speaks. Alright, so now we're going to do this one, which is the uh, mouth open and close. So lips open, 
and we'll click on this and create an action. We're going to reduce the position to one. Jump to 64 and move it up. And now we're going to go in and move the lips again. So we jump to the mouth over here and to the lips. And for all the way up, we want the mouth to be closed. So we're going to grab just these center two points. Hit T and hold Alt, and that lets us close them to the center. And we're going to bring them just till they touch. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. Uh, let's zoom in so we've got more control. And then holding Alt, we're going to bring the lips to just touch. Just like that. And because we want the lips to close here, we're going to go into hit T and grab each of the endpoints one at a time and hit C. And we're going to drink using Alt, we're going to bring the upper lip down to touch the bottom lip. So just like that. And. like that. That looks better, I think. So now we can open the mouth. So when it's open, we want to open all the way. So we grab these two points and then T, then holding Alt, we're going to open the mouth wider. And we don't want to go past the nose. So let's go right I don't know why it's not letting me adjust this nicely, but there we go. So there we go with our maximum mouth opening. And of course at 32, we're going to reset. And don't forget that we did some changes of the curvature. So we're going to hit the curve and all four points and reset the curves. And as you saw, they just changed slightly. So now we've got our closed mouth and open mouth. I think I did it backwards. Let's see. So we go to the bone layer. And move it up. Yeah, it should be, up should be open. Down should be closed. So let's change that around pretty simple to do. We simply grab these two points, move them over here, grab these two points, and move them over here. So now these go to where those were, 64. So now that, that should have reversed it. So yeah, up is open down is closed. So we can open and close the mouth. So we can open and close the mouth and open and close the jaw. So we can have the mouth quite open and the jaw quite open. There we go. So the next part is going to be the how wide the lips are. So we grab this bone Let's go to the construction layer. We're going to create a new action for lips width. And again, we're going to just flip this over to the left. Go to 64. Flip this to the right. And now we're going to go with how wide are these lips. So we go into the lips on the mouth. And we're going to grab again just the two points on the ends. Grab uh, T. Now we've got them both. And since we're at 64, I'm going to use Alt. And we're going to stretch the lips wide. 
and then we jump down to one and we're going to stretch them narrow and obviously we need to also bring these cheeks in and out with that change so that cheek comes over this cheek comes over and let's make sure they're not uh, lopsided and how they're making touching there right there and then at the widest point 64 we're gonna bring those cheeks out like this and I'm holding shift to move these and like that so now we go to 32 and they're moving and it looks good like it is but remember we still want to reset to release everything so that it can be affected by other tools so reset so now we've got our big mouth and little mouth or whistling mouth and our shouting mouth okay so now we go back to the main line and we test everything out so there's our mouth at rest so we can shout or we can whistle and we can smile or frown and we can use them all together to make just about any possible facial uh, opening for the mouth and that's where the rest of these come in so let's go ahead and create tongue up and down let's bring these all the way down jump to 64 bring it all the way up we go into the mouth grab the tongue and simply move it up for 64 and move it down for one and reset it at 32 then we go and back to the main line and to the bone layer grab the other bone create an action tongue left and right for position one we want the lever moved all the way to the left for the maximum all the way to the right and then for the tongue the same thing so we go into the mouth grab the tongue click on it holding shift move it all the way to the right going to one move it all the way to the left and go to 32 and reset to our rest state and we're done with the tongue so now we can open the character's face and mouth with the mouth bone so jaw open mouth open lips wide we can bring the tongue up and down and bring it back and forth ah. so there we go we got our tongue now this will be phonetic mouth what i'll do is i will adjust each of these levers to produce a different mouth opening at each position for this so we can go here and we can allow animated layer effects so that we can then tell it we want your normal state to be invisible and then we go back to the main line and we go back to our phonem off and on 
and we want to keep the where the the control bone moves but now at 32 we are off and at 33 we will become on so we bring and open this up and tell it make it visible during animation at this point and then we're good from there onward it's on from below there it's off so we go back to our main line now and it should be off as a standard and then we can go in and test make sure that it works comes on and goes off as we need so there we go so now we're going to match these mouth shapes go back to the main line the construction layer get rid of all animation go to the construction layer now we've got this funnel wheel we're going to duplicate it out here and we're going to go in and make it visible and make it half transparent or partially transparent and now we can pick it up and move it there we go and then we stretch it to match the normal size mouth. So we get the character's mouth. It's a little bit smaller than that. And there we go. So I think it needs to be a little bit more transparent. Okay. So now, the fun part. We go back to the main line. We go to the mouth control. And we are at position two and we simply need to make the mouth look like the mouth underneath here or as close to it as we can. So we use this control and we open the mouth up a little bit. We drop the jaw down so that their teeth are not showing and the tongue is out of the way. For, oh well it's actually there at the bottom um, for ah and it actually should be wider here so let's go back to the main line and yeah the tongue is pretty much wide on all of these so let's just make it a wider tongue than what it is currently Close these eyes down. There's the mouth, there's the tongue. Grab these two. T, Alt, make it wider. And there we go. So now we've got our wider tongue to work with. Go back to the bone layer. And go back into the mouth control. Whoops, didn't mean to get down there. So go back into the mouth control. And now for A, or A, at position two. There we go. And oh, we need to bring the tongue back up. So this tool. Tongue into oh, the tongue got skinny. Uh, let's go into the tongue here and reset. With tongue up and down, we need to reset the tongue size. Now we reset. There we go. And we go to the center and reset and to the maximum and reset and now we can do tongue up 
Why is it going back to the skinny one? Let's see. Oh, left and right. So, tongue left and right. We've also got to reset it here. Here. And here. All right, so now we can bring the tongue this way. I'll bring it right to there. And this way. And then we can go back to up and down. And for up or down, we're going to go to there. And for up. Reset here and a reset here. And now we bring it up. And there we go. And we reset it again just for making sure. Now we can go back to the main line. And to the bone layer, and now back to mouth control. Alright, so now we go back to two, and we zoom in, and now we can bring our tongue up where we want to see it at the bottom there. This, so, it's a little bit of tongue below the teeth. So, ah, uh, all right, and then we're going to move to, um, let's see, we got 64, and we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different functions. So, 64, uh, every five points, we need to change things. So, we're going to go from 2 to 6. And we want these all to be exactly where they're at. So we're just going to mark them as being this A. Then we're going to go to 7. And we need to move to TH. So we're going to grab the secondary phonon wheel. And we're going to move the TH into the position. And if we zoom in, we can line the teeth up with the teeth. And then that gives us our best starting point. So now we can go to the bone layer, grab the bones, and we want to bring the lips about to there. Let's bring a frown down for TH there. And let's see, we don't want any bottom teeth, but we do want to see the tongue, and we want it to be coming downward from above. So there's TH. So we move five more beyond that, which brings us to 12. And we just click on each of these bones again to make sure that they don't move from our current set. And then we move the phonon wheel to the L shape and move to 13. So now we need to create the L. So as you can see, it's a lot like the one we just did, but the jaw comes up a bit. Whoops, I'm not on the jaw. Uh, let's put that. Again, let's make the teeth be the thing that we overlap. So right there. So now we go back to the bone layer. Grab the transform bone tool. And we want a little bit more of a frown than we had already. Not much. And let's bring the mouth in a little bit. Right like that. And then the tongue should be coming up from the bottom. So, and barely touching the, the teeth. So there's our L. Now we move five beyond that. So it takes us to 18. We click on each of the bones to set them at this position to be the same as five points ago. 
and then we move to the next position which would be 23 and that's going to be the phonon wheel for E so again we overlap the teeth so if we zoom in it's easier to do you can see the edge of the teeth is right there so now we want to match that shape of the mouth as much as possible so let's see we can oops let's go to the bone layer and grab the, the transform bone tool so our frown needs to come back up more like a, a smile but not quite a smile we need the lips to be a little bit wider and let's open up just slightly more uh, right there and then the tongue should be coming from below but overlapping the bottom of the teeth just like that so now we've got our E shape so we move five beyond that. So we're at 23, we want to be at 28. And at 28, we click each of these bones just to set them. And then we move one point further. And now we move the phonetic wheel for S. So again, we zoom in, overlap our teeth, and then make the shape as close as we can. So we go back to the bone layer, select the transform bone tool, and we need the mouth to be narrower, so we're gonna shrink it in here. We wanna bring the jaw up, looks like. Um, just, maybe just right there, bring the mouth up. That, like that. Yes. All right, or in. So now we can move five beyond that. So that would take us to 34. We're going to click each of these bones so that they retain that shape up to this point. Sure, I got them. And so now we can move one point further and move our phonon wheel. So now we're doing F and V. Now if you notice, I laid these mouths out to make it as simple as possible to go from the one to the next. So there's not a lot of changes from one to the next as we use these. So now we go back to the bone layer. And this one is less smile, so bring the uh, bone over to less smile. There we go. And less open, so bring it now about there. And the tongue like it's not there at all and then the bottom lip needs to come up and for that we're going to have to go into the lip layer so here we've got the shape for M and because I affected the F shape by actually going in and editing the lips um, I needed to reset them for the M so I've done that, and now we're going to move along to the next point. So let's start the, you know, we'll end the M right there. So we will select each of these levers where they're at. So that selects our M and then we're going to move one more and now we're going to go to the OO and Q 
shoe look. So we need to move this wheel. And we want to match the top teeth as usual. So we need to open up the mouth. So let's go to the bone layer. And let's go ahead and get the mouth open enough to see the top teeth at least. And now we can go and move our phonem wheel so that we get our teeth centered. Yeah. Right there. So now we need to match the shape as close as we can. I don't think I can make the mouth that tiny, but we'll see. Jaw. Yeah, they want the teeth just barely showing there. And let's zoom in a bit so we can get as close to this as possible. So that's as small as I made the lips for this character. So it, it doesn't have to be identical because every character and every person's mouth is slightly different. So let's see. You don't seem to have a smile or frown needed here. And I think that gives more of the ooh effect and let's, let's take a look I think that'll work that'll work for a sound okay so now we need to move to the end of the rotation for that between that and R Simply move until our lever is right at the end of the O and Q. And we grab each of these to set that position for each of those again. The, the tongue doesn't really show in this one. Um, now we're going to move to R, which is just one more step. And we move the phonem wheel. Again, we zoom in so we're getting our teeth on the top. The teeth on the top of the mouth do not move. And we can see here the teeth are coming together, actually. So we want to put the center of the edge of the teeth to the top right there. So there we go. So we're going to start with a bit of a... Whoops. Didn't want to move that. We're going to go back to the bone layer. And then we're going to start with a bit of a frown. So let's bring that down like that. Let's make the lips wider. And open them more. There we go. And as for the jaw, um, looks like yeah, the teeth should be down there. I was looking at the actual character's teeth, not the uh, model teeth here. So let's see. So yeah, the tongue should just be barely touching down there at the bottom. You just barely see it coming in behind the teeth. So I'm just trying to get... It's hard to get it just right. Let's take a look, see what that looks like. Uh, maybe just a little bit more of the tongue. There we go. So there we got a good R shape. So we move 
forward as we watch our lever here on the phonon wheel. We want to go right between the R and the U. Uh. So, slide this around. Right there we're still R. And that could still be, uh, let's make that uh. So, we'll end the R right there. So we just click on each of these. Don't move them. Just click them for what they are. And then we move to uh. So we turn on the phone and wheel. And grab its layer. That's not the whole thing. We want the phone and wheels layer. Alright. And so we go to O. Again zoom in line up where that teeth overlaps and then center that on your character's lips like that so now we can shape the uh sound so go to the bone layer and let's see we want to yeah, we want to close it up a bit. We don't want so much of a frown. Uh, just a bit. Right there. Uh, looks like we should open the mouth a little bit more. And then the jaw comes up so the teeth... Or no, the teeth should not be showing. So the jaw opens downward. And then... Let's see, does that tongue go on there? Uh, just barely at the bottom, you can see the tongue. So, right about there. So we can turn off our fun and wheel, take a look. Yeah, there we go. So there's our uh. The the lips could be a little wider, I think. Uh, maybe uh, maybe shorter. There, that, that seems a bit better to me. So now we move forward. And that's still uh, right there. So we set the bones. And then we go to ah. So we grab the phone wheel. Rotate it around to O. Again, we work from the top teeth because the top teeth do not move with the face movement. It stays with where the nose ends. Uh, the top teeth and the nose do not separate. Although I guess you could wiggle your nose tip up and down, but basically your top teeth are set in your skull. Uh, the bottom teeth moves with the bottom jaw. A lot of animations, they don't do it that way. I don't know why they seem to move them both for some reason. That always seemed weird to me. So let's see. We need to open up the mouth. And open the jaw as much as we can. And so let's see. So now we need to set the end of that. So move to the last shape is off. So this one ends right here. And then we move to the final shape, which is going to be ah. Over, set the top teeth, and then we make the 
closest semblance to that face as we can, that mouth shape. So we need to widen the mouth. We need to frown, so bring it way frowny and make it wider. Um, I don't want it too frowny, I don't think. It's just a little too frowny. There we go. And open the mouth as far as we can and bring the jaw down as far as we can. So there's our awe. This is for when doing voiceover, we can grab a specific mouth shape at any moment and shape it. But if we go back to our rest state and turn off the phone wheel, now we can manipulate our character. Let's save this all. Go back to the main line. So now if we're in animation, we are working on the character and we need to make it speak we can now simply jump over here and turn on the phone wheel which turns on as soon as we start uh, manipulating this so I need to fix that. So remember I turned on the phone wheel here at the beginning so we're just going to select that bone and then you can see in red that bone and the controls that affect that bone only. So we can select and delete that function of just that added bone. So now we go back to the main line. And now when we want to use the phonetic lever, the, the phonetic tool doesn't pop up unless we want it to. So we can turn it on quickly, choose, oh, we needed S, here it is. Or we needed a. Uh, it's way over here. So we can turn this on, set it, and then turn this off. So when we go to render, we don't end up with the phonetic wheel in our animation. So that's the purpose of setting the mouth up like this. But also, if we go back to neutral, which is where our bones are all in their neutral state, and we go, okay, well, we want to talk, but we want the character shouting. So we can open the mouth and open the jaw and now we can use the phonetics and it will carry over the shapes with the shouting uh, setting. So now all of our mouth shapes are shouting versions. Even the M is slightly separated there. So you can use the phonetics and the standard mouth controls in conjunction with each other. So say you wanted to go, well, I want it whispering. So you can bring them out like this and now all those phonetics are whispering phonetic mouths. So this is the most versatile way to set up a mouth where you have absolute control. Now when you've manipulated these, they will not reset back to uh, static when you come back to the center as they will if you start with static. So if you ever need these all to be back to the static mouth, just select them and bring this tool up and reset their length, scale, and angle. And now we're back to our static rest face. And we can use our standard phonetics if we need to. And we can turn that phonetic wheel off so we don't see it during uh, our actual implementation of the animation. So there we go. We're done with the mouth. And so in our next video, we'll cover the creation of the movement of the eyelids, the pupils, the size of the pupils, and then finally we'll do the head turn and head up and down. So stay tuned. Please visit DangerAware.org, check out our games, our contests. If you have suggestions, please make them. If you can help us in any way, uh, please help. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.